So I've just finished watching the new documentary on Garabandal, Garabandal Catarate Imparable. It's a really a good, really well-made documentary on the apparitions. The best one out there, the best um, documentary on the apparitions. The priest who really seems to be behind it is uh, Father José Luis Saavedra, who wrote a book on Garabandal a couple of years ago and did a doctoral thesis on Garabandal. He seems to be spearheading this recent revival of interest in Garabandal, and along with him, the order that he belongs to, Ogar de la Madre, they seem to be really promoting Garabandal in these last few years. So what uh, impressions do I have from the documentary? First of all, they've gathered together a really good group of witnesses for the apparitions, a lot of people that actually were there during the times of the apparitions. And I'm just displaying some pictures, some videos from the times of the apparitions now. This isn't from the documentary, this is just archive footage that's out there on YouTube. So there's some really good witnesses that they've gathered together, and also people that were even involved in some of the official commissions at the church did church undertook about the apparitions because there have been two commissions the first one that was meant to be taking place during the time of the apparitions but as the documentary shows the the commissioners never really went to the site of the apparitions that often they were there very uh, infrequently and they didn't interview too many villagers they didn't interview too many eyewitnesses to the apparitions and then the second commission, which up to now we knew very little about. But this documentary um, gives a lot of light on the content of that second commission that, as I said, up to now we didn't know much about. We just knew that it had also sided against the apparitions. But they managed to find one of the witnesses for the second commission, one of the people who was on the commission. And he really shows that this second commission was no better. It was In fact, it was even worse than the first one in terms of the re- research that they actually put into the apparitions. The second commission seems to be more like a lunch club by the sound of things, where they gather together in a restaurant a couple of times at the expense of the church and discuss the apparitions a bit. And of course, on this second commission, there were atheists who were part of the commission. It wasn't a commission of faith, and it wasn't a commission that was really seriously studying the apparitions. So the set, so this new documentary brings this to light. A lot of the, the things in this got documentary are, are things that you're know about Garabandal already if you're if you're someone who studied the apparitions but I think for those who haven't looked into the apparition it is a really good introduction I was really glad to see that they managed to bring in Edward Kelly an American um, Spanish teacher that was in Garabandal during a lot of the 1970s and he got to know the children certainly Conchita certainly Mary Loli really well and it was really nice to see that they managed to get him in the documentary because he has so much first-hand experience with the seers and also back in the day he did a lot of good interviews with bishops and senior priests in the Santander diocese and he's able to relay some of his experiences in the documentary of course there are some things that the documentary will not tell you about Garabandal so so the documentary shies away from the feigned ecstasies of the seers. It certainly doesn't ignore the fact that the seers denied that Our Lady appeared to them sometime after the apparitions took place. Um, in fact, it, it gives an explanation that really the, the girls were pushed into denying the apparitions by crooked ecclesiastical figures. So we, we get some, some mentioning of some of the shadow sides of Garabandal. There's no mention, of course, of the plotted miracle between Jacinta and Marie Loli in order to have their own Miragruco like uh, Conchita had. There's no mention of that. There's also no mention of the fact that the the uh, miracle in the evening, the Miragruco, that it took place on the wrong day. There's no mention of that one, that Our Lady had said that the miracle of the visible host would take place one day and actually it occurred in the early hours of the following day. I know that maybe for some people that's a small thing, but, but you know, there it is. That's how it happened. The miracle didn't take place on the day that Our Lady said it would. But on the subject of the miraculous host appearing on Conchita's tongue, there are some really great eyewitnesses to the event who are able to tell us exactly how it happened, how they saw the host appearing all of a sudden on her tongue. And we're also told about the wicked Franciscan who goes back and tells the bishop nothing happened 
uh, but actually he didn't see anything and things had happened that evening even if it was a little later than the Virgin Mary had previously said. Again through eyewitnesses the film also tells us about, tells us about some miracles that occurred in Garabandal or linked to the apparitions of Garabandal particularly this young woman who had I think it said leukemia and she was dying of leukemia and a crucifix was brought to her that Our Lady had kissed at Garabandal and after kissing it she was miraculously healed and the bishops came to see her or someone from the bishop came to see her and said to her husband look do not mention anything about Garabandal in this cure because Garabandal is a false apparition. So she was pressured and her husband was pressured not to link the miracle to Garabandal in any way. And that shows the attitude that the church had had towards the apparitions in Garabandal. And in fact, the woman was cured a second time as a result of Garabandal, which the film also tells us. And maybe that's a recurring theme of the documentary, that the bad guys are the bishop, the bad guys are the people on the commission, the bad guys are a lot of priests who don't like the message of Garabandal, especially the second public message that many priests, bishops and cardinals are on the way to hell and they're taking many souls with them. And I suppose it's understandable why they don't like that message, but there it is, Our Lady apparently said it. Some people have criticised the film Garabandal la Sola Dios lo sabe on account that it didn't mention much about the miracle, the warning, the chastisement. But this documentary certainly goes into great detail about those subjects. I can remember speaking to another to a Garabandal expert, and that was his main problem with the feature film, that it was showing the experience of people coming to visit Garabandal, but it wasn't getting to the warning, to the chastisement, to the miracle, which is a, a real focus point, a real key part of the message of Garabandal. So this documentary goes into quite a bit of detail about these events that are meant to occur in the future. It doesn't go into the minutia, you know, the stuff about the miracle occurring on the feast of the martyr of the Eucharist, I think in the month of May or sorry, at March, April or May and happening on a Thursday. It doesn't tell us anything about that kind of thing. It puts it more vaguely that, that the miracle is going to happen and it's not just going to bring about the conversion of sinners, but it's going to bring about the conversion of the whole world. So it's an extraordinary miracle that's promised at Carabandal. And having been there, having been to Garabandal myself two occasions I can't help but uh, desire for this to take place to see those hills around Garabandal those mountains in which Garabandal is nestled to see them filled with individuals who travel there in order to see a great miracle Garabandal is nestled in a natural amphitheatre and if you were in any of the hills any of the mountains anywhere near it you'd be able to see that little town and you'd be able to witness witness the miracle in such an amazing manner. In fact, that's one of the real wonderful things about this documentary, the visuals. There's so many great drone footages of the area around Garabandal. It really captures the natural beauty of the place. Even when you're there on a cold, wet morning, the place has a certain beauty to it. And yeah, it can be cold. It can be very wet there. And the footage of the, the archive footage really captures that. The dirty ground, the stony ground, the animals all over the place, the cow bear ringing all the time. Yeah, that's captured really well in the documentary. So overall, as you might expect, the documentary portrays a very positive uh, vision of the apparitions of Our Lady in Carabandal. And it makes it very clear that although the apparitions have been have been tested by the church, the tests that the church has done have not been serious enough. The film calls for a third commission a third commission for the apparitions. And particularly, there's a call for some medical experts to look over the evidence. In fact, one really tantalizing moment is when we're told about how there was a doctor in Garabandal for, I think it said, 50 days around the time that Conchita was being interviewed in Santander. There was a doctor there for 50 days recording daily bits of evidence from the, the children, recording exactly what was happening. And when he goes back to Santander and tells the diocese what he's seen, they say, look, Conchita has denied the apparitions. And he's like, what about all this evidence? And they're, well, no, we think it's epilepsy. And he's like, what about all this evidence? And he's just dismissed. It would be amazing 
to have the copy of his report. I'm sure Father Jose Luis Saavedra is singing the same thing, how he'd love to get his hand on that doctor's report on the apparitions. So the documentary is calling for further study on the apparitions. And I think that's a welcome thing because there's a lot of unknown features of the apparitions. And I think I'll do another video on these unknown features. One thing that really really um, interests me is where were the other three girls on the day of the second public message? If you look back through the archive footage, you don't see them. And the film constantly talks about the children, the children in a plural, making the second message. But the second message was just from Conchita. Did the, did the other children agree with the apparitions at that time? Were they there near her at the time of the second message? It doesn't look like it. What happened there? What was going on? There's not even much about that in the great book, She Went in Haste to the Mountain. And this documentary, this documentary doesn't really give you any new bits of information um, that aren't out there already. The only exception is this man they've managed to find who was actually on the second commission and is able to tell us how how much of a farce the second commission was. So overall, it's a really interesting documentary. I do have a bit of a gripe with the name that they've chosen in English, the translation. I think they're calling it Garabandal Uncontainable Cascade. I mean, that's not really language that we use much in English. I think it's much better to translate the title as Garabandal Unstoppable Waterfall. The idea is this, this flow of water that you cannot stop. There's a momentum there that cannot be stopped. Maybe even Garabandal irresistible waterfall, showing how you can't, you know, there's a double meaning when, when you use the word irresistible. You can't stop it, but also you are drawn to it. So maybe they've made a mistake in translating it as uncontainable cascade, which doesn't mean too much uh, for the standard English listener. Putting this small thing to one side, overall it's a really well-made documentary. At the moment it's just available in Spanish, but I'm sure very soon it will be translated into English. And even if for experts there isn't a lot of new information in the film, the manner of the presentation and the presentation of the witnesses in a visual form, hearing their actual voices, that's something that you don't get in a lot of other films. So it's to be commended for that reason. And I look forward to seeing more work from Father Jose Luis on the apparitions at Carabandal. And may God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.